prayer will be here at the temple tomorrow from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, next announcement, uh, this comes from the youth choir. It says youth re choir rehearsal. Um, that will take place in room 30. Again, this is for the youth choir. It says greetings. There will be a practice for the International Youth Mass Choir in room 30 directly after the first service. This will be the last practice at the headquarters temple. The rest of the practices will be on Zoom. This comes from Sister Dawn Fletcher. Next announcement, uh, this is coming from the maintenance team. It says floor care preparation schedule, main sanctuary and gymnasium. It says the upper sanctuary and the gymnasium. Brothers who have volunteered to assist in floor care need to meet here Monday at 3 p.m. or 6 p.m. to work with Brother Young and, my, and Brother Minor. Also, the gym floor area will need to be available for the next two weeks. Any celebration event should be held in the classrooms, and that's so that they can, we can do what we need to do so that the floor could be ready for the dedication. Next announcement, just uh, some cards to read. It says, Thank, it says, thanks for all of you. Thanks for all that you do. It says, greetings to the family of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It was so wonderful and loving to see God's people together. I want to thank all of you for your, for your love, your prayers, and kindness. I will never forget this blessed day from you all. Dear church family, you have such a kind and generous heart that is always willing to go the extra mile, and you are appreciated more than you can know. Thank you so very, very much for what you all done. God bless you all. Your sister, Sister McAlilly. Next card says, thank you. It says, to my first church family, thank you for your love and kindness during our time of bereavement. You do a, it says, you do a heart good. This comes from Brother James McWhite and his family. And the last card, it says, thank you. It's the thoughtful things people do for us that make all the difference. It says, greetings to all my brothers and sisters. Your thoughtfulness meant so much to me. And I just want you to know, I truly appreciate it. Love you all. This comes from Mother Marie Johnson. That will conclude the announcements at this time. We turn it back to the hands of Brother Sean. Amen. We thank God for the announcements. Please adhere to them and govern yourselves accordingly. Now we've reached the most important part of the service. Pastor Jennings. Yes! Greetings, everybody, Greetings. brothers and sisters. We are thankful again for God blessing us to be present. Yes, for all of you that are here, we are thankful to the one God for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things, for being the true sender and teacher all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. We thank God for the way of holiness revealed to his servants while we're learning. It's a blessing when God opened up your eyes and he told his apostles, blessed are your eyes for they see. And I'm certainly thankful for the time that God seen fit to open up my understanding yes. that I may understand the scriptures. We enjoyed all the testimonies, especially thank God for my sister Amen. from Orlando, Florida. Yes. Well, God never got out of the miracle working business. Yes. <laughs> to be held up stage four cancer. <laughs> wonderful. You know the power of prayer is wonderful. Yes. I want to encourage you that are still waiting on healing. The main thing is to believe God. Yes. It doesn't matter how long it takes, you keep believing God. <clears throat> Wonderful. Bible says, he that comes to God must That's it. believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. That's it. 
So when you are constant in seeking God, yes. won't be for long the windows of heaven will open up. Yes. And he will pull you out blessings you won't have room to receive. I believe that. That's right. Glory to God. Whatever God says, I believe it. I don't fight nothing that's in the scriptures. If I struggle with something, all right, but I never fight what the Bible said. Wonderful. When he sent the prophets and sent the apostles, he gave them all the right information and I'm pretty sure it did not agree with their feelings. Until on one occasion they told Jesus, this is a hard saying. Yeah. Sure. He that can receive this saying, let him receive it. Yeah. There are many things that God said in the word. I know it's hard to me. Hmm. I don't have to ask you. I know it's hard to you. Got that right. But it's good for you. In the long run, it'll pay off. Now we have Williams. I forgot where I sent him to, but. <laughs> where is he, Reese? Where is he going at? Georgia? Detroit. Oh, Detroit. All right. He's there ministry. Hope he come back in one piece. <laughs> Detroit's a rough city. But with the gospel, it gets you through all the time. Oh, yeah. All right, let me read this baptism report. This is two weeks. 21 in headquarters, two in Pine Bush, New York. I got a beautiful call from Minister Lionel. Minister Lionel, if you're listening, I got your voice, Bell. I believe it was his brother and his wife who went away, I think, on a vacation. To, I think one of those islands. And there was a woman that called wanted to be baptized. Uh -huh. The brother and his wife was at the island enjoying themselves, but had to end up going down to the river to baptize somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a blessing. We have 82 souls went down in the water in Bronx, New York. Wonderful. 10 in New Brunswick, one in Del Mar, one, or rather eight in Baltimore, one in Portsmouth, three in Raleigh, two in Rocky Mount, five in Oxford, North Carolina, six in Columbia, one in Florence, seven in Atlanta, two in Valdosa, seven in Savannah, Georgia, three in Tallahassee, 14 in Orlando, Florida, 14 in Miami, Florida, two in Jackson, Mississippi, one in Naples, Florida, eight in Dallas, 15 in Houston, one in San Antonio, uh, two in Lafayette, Louisiana, two in Federal Way, Washington, four in Milwaukee, 12 in North Chicago, four in Detroit, international baptisms, two in Melbourne, Australia, two in Rockhampton, Australia, eight in Perth, Australia, one in Republic, of Dominica, yeah, Dominican Republic. That's where the sisters was baptized at. Five in uh, Dearborn, South Africa. Three in Cape Town, South Africa. Eight in Johannesburg, South Africa. 269 in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Bible said God added Delhi. Delhi, that's it. Such as should be saved. Yes. I'm glad to be in, for real, the church that God started. Nice. I don't have to roam around and try to find the church that God started. I found it, God put me in it, and God be my help, I'm here to stay. Now I want to say that to Cape Town, or rather to Johannesburg, South Africa, to the first church there, as you know, God bless us with a big, beautiful, large temple, and I was scheduled to dedicate that temple March of next year. 
but something happened <laughs> to block that schedule. Uh, Brother uh, Ron Skaleski, can you put the church in Cape Town up? God bless us with another temple in South Africa. That's in Cape Town, South Africa. We have a large temple in Johannesburg. And God bless us to buy this temple in Cape Town, South Africa. We can see it about six or seven hundred. Do you see the way God is working? Amen. So, amen. So, besides me dedicating the church in Johannesburg and flying back and going back again, we'll just wait till we finish doing this one. That way, when I fly to Johannesburg and bomb the city with the scriptures, then I can fly over to Cape Town. Dedicate that temple, then I make my way home. So God bless us again with another big, beautiful temple in South Africa. This is the Lord's doing. That's it. God remember, and so do I, when He showed me this. Many came in and tried to turn me away from what God said to me over 45 years ago. And they wonder why I wouldn't pay them no mind. I wouldn't pay them no mind because God's mind is better than theirs. And brother, nobody can lead you better than God can. I want to say to the saints of Valdosa, Georgia, we have the keys now to the new temple. That's a blessing. So Valdosa, Georgia, God willing, we'll be taking you through a walkthrough in January. You keep listening, we'll give you the dates when the Valdosa, Georgia congregation will walk through their new temple and when work will start. God willing, Minneapolis, Minnesota, we will be settling, God willing, on the new Minnesota temple. God be our helper. God willing, we'll notify you to let you know when your walkthrough will take place. I'm looking at a beautiful, large Jewish synagogue in Toledo, Ohio. I want it. Amen. Built out of limestone. Beautiful balcony and I want it. <laughs> I'm sending my people to Toledo, Ohio on Tuesday. And if it meet the criteria, which I hope it do, we're going to buy it. All right. Amen. We're going to buy it. God be my helper. Saw another temple in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I want that. And I'm asking God for it. I'm looking in the state of Montana, Midwest. Saw a beautiful Jewish synagogue there. I want that. I'm asking God for it. I'm looking in. North and South Dakota. Saw some temples there. Indian Territory. I want that, Brother Nate. Come on, Jay! Come on! Come on. <laughs> Wherever our feet have touched the soil, I can bear witness. God has given us victory. Now we thank God for all of you that came to dust upstairs. Looks good up there so far, doesn't it? I looked at the folk and they were so happy. And after they got done, everybody sat around and just started talking and rejoicing. It's beautiful to be in something God is in. 
I don't have no off the wall visions. And her voice is through TikTok. <laughs> I get mine from heaven. And getting it from heaven, it gives me very clear direction. That's why I don't let people tell me what cannot be done. With God, all things is possible. Let me say why I come to mind. All members that signed up for the international construction team, we had to put that together because God is spreading this word. And so many thousands are coming toward until I just can't afford one team trying to hop everywhere. So we organized an international construction team and for brothers and sisters that know what they're doing. I don't want no one hammering on something that don't require a hammer. Many signed up. So during the international holy convocation, or rather the closing year convocation, all members that signed up that will be here for the international construction team Sunday morning at 1030. I need all of you here. I want to meet with you so I can start appointing officers because we have churches where work must start. And we have to deploy brothers and sisters throughout the country. We have all the scaffolds we need. We don't have to rent no scaffolds. Uh, we have architects, we have plumbers, we have electricians, Wonderful. Wonderful. carpenters, sheetrock layers, and painters, and carpet layers. Well, we have all that. Nice. Now it's my job to organize you. We're building a work for God's glory. Even since we've been here. And we've been here just a little bit, yeah, a little bit over five years. We outgrew this place already. How many people have bought churches or whatever? And uh, by the time they get in there to dedicate, it's already too small. <laughs> God is, God is flooding the temples with so many people. And this is cross country. He gave us a gospel that we can go anywhere. I mean anywhere. And before I leave the city or state or country, we already have a congregation that's larger than most, most people churches that they already have. That's God's doing. Someone said you're boasting. Yeah, I'm boasting in God. And I say like Paul that no man shall stop us from this boasting. If God didn't send you, and you're not out here by God's permission, then you're not able. I don't care where you go, where you travel. Somebody wrote me and said, what do you think about preachers traveling the same places you go and fishing for members of First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't think of it. For men to travel where I travel, well, it's a free country. <laughs> you can go wherever you want. I don't worry about that. God gave us the gospel. That's it. So our traveling don't be in vain. I'm not fishing for one people. I'm fishing for the world. You see, when you fish right, God tells us the apostles, I'll make you fishes of men. So I am not out fishing for one location, no. Men want to keep up with me. That's all right. They got a lot of traveling to do. You're going to have to go to Italy and Spain and Europe and Scotland and Ireland and Madrid and Alaska and Fiji Islands and Samoan Islands, South Pacific, across the Atlantic and 
Australia and New Zealand and New Guinea and Bahamas and Vietnam, you would never be able to catch up. And, ne hallelujah, never. Amen. I, I can't keep up with the spirit. My flesh is weak. But the spirit is always willing. That's it. All right, let's go to work in the Bible. So my construction team, remember, on December 31st at 1030, you that be here in headquarters for the dedication, please be here for the meeting, 1030, Sunday morning. I need to organize it and see who I'm going to have president and vice president and secretary. And wherever I send thee, you go there. Hey, Amen. If I send you in the jungle, you go there. Hey, Amen. God sent us. There have been times where we had to take a machete and cut back vines in order to reach the people with the gospel. Because the place was so dense, like I was in the jungle. And uh, didn't have places to sit, so we sat on the floor. Yeah. Hotels wasn't so accommodating, but I didn't care. <laughs> it made me think of Deke at the time. I sent my brother, Elder Jennings, he was deacon then. The real desolate part, rural area in Jamaica years ago. Wasn't no nice hotel there. And uh, there was a mule across the street. In this particular hotel, I fought with lizards every day. Ants every day. I remember laying down and my back kept itching. And I got up and there was a lizard there. Knocked him on the floor and beat him to death. <laughs> so one day I sent Deke. <laughs> I sent Elder Jennings to the same location years ago. I said, you call me, let me know that you made it all right. I want to be sure you got there safe. He called me. <laughs> He said, Gene. I said, yeah. You make it to Jamaica? He said, yeah. But uh, <laughs> something wrong. <laughs> he said, I think I'm at the wrong place. I said, uh, go to the porch of the hotel and tell me, <laughs> do you see a mule across the street? Should be a donkey across the street. It's tied up. He said, I, don't. I said, just go and come back to the phone. He went and looked, came back. He said, yeah, it is. I said, oh, you're in the right place. <laughs> you're in the right place. So he had fellowship with the ants and the lizards. You see, this gospel that I'm preaching takes you everywhere. You don't always have everything good. When I went to Sierra Leone, West Africa, and I was there almost a month, no breakfast, no lunch, no dinner. We survived out of our luggage, what we took with us. Nuts, and grapes, and Raisins. We couldn't drink the water from the faucet. We had to bring bottled water. By the time I came back, oh man, I was skin and bones. My secretary, I said, what kind of hotel we had before I left? She said, oh, oh it's five stars. <laughs> I said, yes. Yeah. She said, oh, yeah. She said, the hotel. <laughs> He said, Pastor, don't worry, I got you covered. He said, the hotel 
have a lot of ratings. Uh -huh. So I went there. There wasn't a star, <laughs> nowhere to be found. So I suffered it. Just a few feet over, there was a shack. And chickens were skinnier than the pigeons here in America. That's when Huey found some spam. I forgot spam was even on the earth. I'm not, I'm not much of a pork eater, but brother, <laughs> thank God for the spam. You know, it was so funny. We was hungry, too. And Hugh is bigger than I am. He's about three times or four times bigger. You know he was hungry. You know, when you're so hungry, it changes your attitude. Man, you hungry. He forgot all about I was Pastor Jennings. He was, <laughs> he was angry. I was angry. I said, Lord, do something here. <laughs> here he came knocking on my door with such excitement. You are thank you just received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. He came in. I found spam. <laughs> I said, what? Spam, I said. <laughs> Amen. I said, man, look, take it down there to the kitchen. Tell them to fry it till it's burnt. I want to get all the flavor, all the succulents. He came back with this big tray and these big plates, and they even had a silver top on it and decorate spam with leaves. I took it off. I was so hungry, I ate the leaves. I ate the stems and everything. He would look at me, save me some spam. <laughs> so you don't always have it good or have it comfortable when you're standing for a gospel like this. And when God send you, you are go wherever God send you. Amen. And that's what he have done. And that's what he's doing. All right, let's go to work. And the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians come to mind. And begin at the 11th verse. We greet all the brothers and sisters worldwide of the truth of God family. We thank God for all of you. We hope to see you at the end of this year. Remember, viewers, you don't want to miss this great dedication service. I advise you to get here early. It's going to be a wonderful event. I'm already looking past this building. Brother Denny said to me, he was here for the first time yesterday from Columbia. He said, you, I'm amazed how you design things and God gives you an eye. He said, this is it, isn't it? I said, no. He stopped and looked. He said, this is not it. I said, oh, no. The vision that God gave me is bigger than this whole campus. The vision that God gave me exceeds this campus. You can put this entire headquarters building. And what God showed me about five times. Amen. You're not even touching the iceberg yet. I have to say like Queen Sheba, the half, glory to God, have not been told. So we're not trying to keep up with nobody. This is the Lord's doing. And it's all backed up, certified, justified by heaven. Someone said, I can't see it. I don't know worry about what you can't see. But we see it. I remember many men came here that said there was preachers tried to get me off the platform that God put me on to detour the vision that they didn't have. They told me I should do this and I should do that and I should do the other. Some threw the age in my face. They said, Pastor Jennings, you're a young man. You see, I know more than you. 
I said, that's all right. And the ones told me that, I would ask them. I said, tell me something. If you know so much, why aren't you doing the work that God sent us to do? If your suggestions don't work for you, why in the world would you think they'll work for me? They said, that's what's wrong with you. You won't let us tell you anything. I say, I'll let you tell me something as long as it stays scriptural. And it's in keeping with what my boss already said. Otherwise, in that, I don't care who you are. I'm like the prophet Nehemiah. I'm doing a good work. And I'm not coming down. Wonderful. Uh, and we're building something good. And what makes it so beautiful, the people can see for themselves. The mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. The mighty hand of God. They can see it. Everywhere this gospel travel, hundreds are going down in water. I'm praying to God now for a place in Washington, D.C. Or on the outskirts of Washington. We went there for two days. And baptized over 220 something souls. Beautiful. Two days. Many men wouldn't get 200 and, 201 in uh, 20 years. That's true. Why is this happening? It's the Lord's doing. Don't credit me. It's God. I always credit God. Amen. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and. Begin at verse 11. I want to take my time and itemize this good. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All right, turn Mr. Moretti up. Give him some more power so he don't sound so devilish weak. <laughs> Amen. My, my, Williams my. ain't here. I figure I just hit you. <laughs> I had to bother somebody. <laughs> All right, let's have it now. First Corinthians chapter 13 and at verse 11. Yes. When I was a child. Listen at this. When I was a child. I spake as a child. I speak as a child. And I want you to pay attention to what God is itemizing section by section of the characteristics of man. Wonderful. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. My understanding was as a child. I thought as a child. My thinking was as a child. But, but when I became a man, glory to God. When I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away Childish, childish things. A glory to God. Read that again. When I was a child. Now. When you're a child and come into the world, you have no understanding. No speech. So therefore, someone have to take care of you. Handle you. Bathe you, feed you. On your own, thank God you're not able to do. You have to have someone wait on you. Mother and father become your maid and butler. Wait on you hand and foot. When you're hungry, you don't know how to say, I want to eat. But you know how to make noise. Mother or father, they understand something's wrong. You're too incompetent to change yourself. So you have to lay in your mess. Are you listening? Amen. Until somebody changes you, you have to lay in your mess. It doesn't matter how much mess it is. You lay there. Until some able hands come. Thank God and show mercy. And clean you up. And glory to God and wash you up. 
As you begin to develop, you begin to say some type of sound. Mother or father train you. Easy words. They don't give you nothing difficult like metropolis. <laughs> what fool would try to tell a child that? Easy words where the child can identify sound. He or she may not can speak clear, but they can make noise. Dad, dad. Mama. Sometimes they just say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How's my baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? They tongue have not yet been formed. The formation of the tongue depends upon the formation of the mind. As the mind develops, speech develops. Are you listening? Amen. When the mind gets more mature, words come. Then those words can be properly uttered. Are you listening? When I was a child, when I was a child, I spake. I spake. Turn them up. I don't, I don't like that. Turn them up some more back there. Make them make them louder. Till he hurt the folk. <laughs> when I was a child. I spake as a child. I speak. As a child. How do a child talk? In the beginning stages, none of the child's speech makes sense. It's slob making noise. Can't control this saliva gland. It's a novice, a babe, a beginner. You can't even feed it like an adult. Hey Amen. The mother have to eat right, good food, and the chemicals of the body break it down. Until once the body breaks it down, then the mother can breastfeed the child. That child don't have sense enough to let the breast go. If they keep drinking, watch coughing and choking. Mother got to withdraw herself. And then mother take her time and burp the child. What she's doing? Making more room. So the child don't be so full, she's making more room in the body. So the child can digest some more. In the spiritual. Are you listening? When you first come to Christ. He come through mercy. While you lay in your mess. Are you listening? And he sends someone to you. A father. Amen. That know how to feed these children. Give them that just started milk. For the Bible said milk is for them that is unstable in the word of righteousness. But meat is for them that is of a full age. So we come along and give you milk. Things that are, if I use the term, light in the scriptures. You can drink it. See, we have to break down the word of God. You know, you can take a formula. You can take uh, almonds and walnuts. Break it down so. Get some water. You got some nasty almond milk. For you, that, for you that drink it, that's what I think of it. I think my wife loved that stuff. I, that's how I give it. If me the will he's talking about. It. That right. You like almond milk? No. No. Yeah, man, some folk eat almond milk and Captain Crunch. That's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Amen. To me, to me, to me, man, that's wicked. Amen. So then, once you digest that milk, it's my job to break down. This is what the Old Testament means. When God appeared to the prophet, the prophet said his teeth was white like milk. That doesn't mean he have a good smile. Milk represents the wisdom of God. You don't break down nothing with your tongue. Your tongue is used for taste. Your teeth is used to break down. So you, the word of God, the wisdom of God must be broken down where it can be properly served. And for that to happen, God have to open up the understanding of the preacher so he can break this meat down. Some, you serve meat. Some, you serve milk. Them that are unskillful, them that are babes, them that are novices, them that are beginners. Milk children. That's why I have to give milk to plenty of you. I believe Paul said I fed you milk and you're still carnal minded. You don't find no child in the natural when it's drinking milk yelling for something else too quick. That child small drinks that milk. Sometimes he throw it up because he don't know when to stop. His body rejects it. Sometimes you reject the milk of the word because there's something in there. The word is not sour, but there's sourness in us. Because there's sourness in us, the word don't settle in our soul too good because we're not ready. Thank God to submit to the milk of the gospel. So now the child go through stages of training. My wife and I had seven. A lot of things I missed because of travel. I have left the country. When I left, the children was crawling. Came back, the children was walking. Amen. But I had to keep going in order to feed this mass crowd of children. Whenever the child started walking, the child fall. Because the child had to learn how to balance itself. Many that come into the knowledge of the truth run too fast. And you make too many claims. And then when you fall, you can't take it because you put yourself up too high. Good teaching. Take your time. Someone said, I don't want to fall. Well, let me educate you. Failure, failure is part of the divine development process in God. Because God said through the prophet, when I fall, if nobody going to fall, then that wouldn't be there. Sure. When I fall, I shall arise. Glory to God. So failure is part of your development. You don't need to walk around on eggshells. Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to fall. I don't want to make no mistake. I don't want to do this. I don't, yeah. It makes me think of I was in Detroit. Years ago, in the 90s, we had a small congregation of four people. But I was faithful to that congregation, Williams and I, and we was flying there every month, preaching to four people. There was an old mother there, and she was very zealous. She passed on now. Mother Brown and Brother Brown, we would always eat at their house, and Mother Brown... Um, if it was possible, she could make a brick taste good. You know, there are some people just got the cooking touch. And there are some people, well, there are some people you come back, give me more. There are some people, the first helping was too much. I don't want, I don't want no more at all. You hungry? Yeah. 
That's all right. So we were sitting there in the dining room eating dinner. And I would all I, I would talk about, and I still talk about, when you're serving people food, don't talk over their food. It's very rude you serving people a plate of food and you're going to stand there and have a conversation with people. No. You tell the person, wait a minute, so you can serve the people their food and then you talk to who you're going to talk to later. Don't stand there and run off at the mouth seasoning their food. <laughs> so the mother was so zealous. Get me? So zealous. And to <laughs> She put some form of muzzle over her mouth, and it was so tight, Williams could, oh, he couldn't hold his composure. You know, when Williams laughed, his whole body moved. He just give everything away. And I punched him on his leg and said, stop laughing. He said, I can't. He just kept jumping. So Brother Brown said, Brother Williams, are you all right? He said, yeah, I'm all right. He kept jumping and jumping. I said, uh, Mother Brown. No, Mother Brown said to Brother Brown said to her, "Why you have that muzzle on your face?" She pulled it down and said, "Because I don't want to talk over his feud." And Pastor Jennings said, "You can't have a spot <laughs> or wrinkle." <laughs> so Brother Brown said, "If you don't want to talk over his food, just shut up." and serve the man his food. She said, another reason why I have it on, because I don't want to spill no gravy. If I spill gravy on myself, that's a spot. That's a wrinkle. Well, she done went too far. Too far. <laughs> See, when you become overzealous, you overthink scripture. See, just think of the scriptures. And don't go beyond that. Because when you overthink it, you're going to make a mess on yourself. Like a baby, they eat too much. He or she make a mess on themselves until you clean the child and clean it good. Listen at the Bible here. When I was a child. When I was a child. I spake as a child. All right, let's continue with speaking. Words form. And sometimes as a child, they repeat what they heard and what they repeat. Repeating is not safe. See, everything you repeat is not good to say. Huh? And sometimes children be cussing and uh, they don't know. But the words sound good to them. They cuss and start laughing. <laughs> so and so. <laughs> Why? They heard it from mama or from daddy or from television or from uncle or from the street. So in the midst of teaching a child, you find yourself adding and subtracting. Adding to the vocabulary and subtract words they should not say. Then you have to give them an understanding Gradually, precept upon precept, line upon line. Why? That child is dealing with somebody that's more experienced and more mature than they are. Amen. Do you get what I'm telling you? Yeah. Yes. Some of us are childlike in understanding life. There are some people men and women, they may be too mature for that man and woman. You know, sometimes a man and woman, they're interested in that older man or that older woman, not considering they may be too mature for them, too experienced. And because he or she is too experienced, they are more uh, uncomfortable around him or her. Then there are some that spots their interests. What can he teach me? What can she teach me? But then there are some that's strongly intimidated 
by what she knows and by what he knows. So therefore, they become distant. Many of us are intimidated. Glory to God about God's word. Because in here is the knowledge of everything. And you have to be, bring yourself closer to the mind of God because he is more mature That's true. than us all and can teach us things about self that you will never discover on your own. Yes, right. Are you listening? Yes. Many of us are babes now. There are many babes in the pulpit. That's why many of the preachers don't make sense. You can't analyze the Bible. They try to analyze the Bible. They got a rattle when they have. When they read Matthew 20, 19, they got the Father, they got the Son, got the Holy Ghost. That's a dumb child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you getting me? That's true. I don't want to make it so plain. When you get a preacher who's a baby, there's one throne, the throne of the Father David, two thrones in heaven. That's a dumb child. Yes. Come on. That's right. Glory to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Amen. When a preacher is spiritually illiterate, the tongue of God have not yet formed in him. Give me the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. Follow me and hear me good. I want to take my time and soak you. Begin at verse 1. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and at verse 1. All right, let's have it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I in saw. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. I saw the Lord sitting, sitting upon the throne. Upon the throne, high and lifted up. High, thank God, and exalted. And his train filled the temple. His train, his garment filled the temple. Filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Yes. Each one had six wings. And. With twain he covered his face. And. And with twain he covered his feet. And. And with twain he did fly. What else? And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord of hosts. Hold it. Amen. It didn't say holy father, holy son, and holy, holy ghost. Holy, holy, holy. Notice the, how it singles it out. Holy, 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 holy is, is the Lord. The Lord of one. Yes. Lord of hosts mean Lord of all. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I said he's Lord over everybody. The whole earth. The whole earth is full of his glory. It's full of their glory. His glory. Just one. Yes. Hallelujah. His glory. Amen. His glory. Full of his glory. And the post Listen of the, at this. And the post of the door moved at the voice the of him. The post of the door moved at the voice of him. That cried. That cried. And the house was filled with smoke. All right. Then said I, woe is me. Woe is me. For I am undone. Listen at this. Because woe is me. I am undone. I am not ready. And because I am a man of unclean lips. I am a lips, man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of the people. And I dwell in the midst of the people. Of unclean lips. Whose mouth is not right. For my eyes have seen have the king. Have seen the king. The Lord the of The Lord hosts. of all. Right, read quick. Then flew one of the seraphims unto now me. Now I want you to pay attention to this. One of the seraphims flew unto me. Having a live coal in his hand. Glory to God. You know, there's coal and there's live coal. Live coal in his hand. Hey, listen, if the coal is not live, it's just there. You can play with it. You can That's handle true. it. You can toss it around him, right. throw it at somebody. Thank God. But if the coal is alive, it's live burning coal. hot. That's right. Amen. Amen. So therefore, the seraphim with, took tongues, a certain device that was made to handle coal. You have to be made 
to handle the cold of the scriptures here. That's it. Why? Because it's hot with the spirit of God in it. That's right. What did he say? Then flew one of the seraphims unto me. And what? Having a live coal in his hand, uh -huh. which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Yes. And he said, and he, and he laid it upon my mouth. <laughs> laid he laid it. Upon my mouth. Before then my mouth was unclean. Unclean lips. But if you know the thing about heat, it'll get the germs out. That's right. It'll purify it. Go to God. Eh? Amen. He took the live coal and laid it upon my mouth. Upon my mouth. And said, Lo, this have touched thy lips. This have touched thine lips. And thine iniquity. Thine iniquity. Is taken away. And, and you, thy, need, you need God and thy what? And thy sin purged. You need God, the spirit of God, power of God. They get in the preacher's mouth and fix it and clean it up. So the speech of heaven and the speech of scripture is in his mouth. Then he don't talk baby talk. That's right. That's right. In other words, his knowledge of scripture, his understanding of scripture, and his explanation of scripture, he will rightly divide the scripture. So those that hear it will walk away with an understanding. Wonderful. Amen. You see, three God is that's that's Goebbels talk. Anything that contradicts God's word is Goebbels talk. Goebbels talk. That's right. Amen. That's a preacher that had mess on himself, and he made a mess in the pulpit. That's why the pulpit smells so bad. <laughs> You have a stinking preacher that need to be changed. Are you listening? Yeah. Go back to the book of Corinthians. Back in I want to take my time and take this apart here. First Corinthians chapter 13 and at verse 11. Yes. When I was a child. When I was a child. I spake as a child. Speak as a child. I understood as a child. Now, understand it. Child have to learn all the alphabet. If the only thing the child learns is ABC, ABC, what kind of word will it spell? ABC don't spell nothing. Child have to learn the alphabet and then have to sound them out. Sound out the A, and sound out the B. I remember when I was in elementary school and I can remember the teacher sounding out the alphabet. A, A, A. I looked at her like she was a fool. She said, sound it out, class. A. I was like, A. B, B, B. Sound it out, preacher. One. <laughs> One God here. See, you got to sound it out with scriptures. Because the scriptures have a distinct sound. It's the sound of God in scripture. Whenever the scriptures are being taught and there's not the distinct sound of the spirit, then that preacher is not authorized to speak the language of God. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. Now, childlike understanding. Mother and father, whoever have to sit and explain everything. I have a training wheels. I remember I had that old little red bike. They don't make bikes like they used to. No. I had a bike where the tires never flat. I run over anybody. <laughs> and nails sticking all over the place. I mean, when I was little, we had put popsicle sticks yeah. on our spokes. Oh, we had blow up balloons and put them where the spokes is yeah. to give the bike a different sound. Yeah. When I came up, they had uh, banana seats. And Harley Davis, right? High. How they call them sissy bars. Then sometime we'll take the handlebars off and put steering wheels on. 
That's, that's, that's before your time. Amen. But we would modify things. When we built a go-kart. When we was little, they delivered milk and glass bottles in wood crates. And we would take them wood crates apart. And uh, we will have the square part of the crate. And then we have a long part. And then we'll find some wheels from skates and take them off and put them on a cart. Oh, gang of us. You see, we, we was very innovative. We wasn't walking around with our head down to no phone. We'll melt candles. Our parents would melt candle wax and put them in tops of jars. We'll play tops or we'll all get together with marbles. Play marbles, or we'll all get together and play spinning tops. Oh, we was busy. Not like society today. Have a phone and walk into a Mack truck. <laughs> That's true. It wasn't no Google for us. It was an encyclopedia for us. There was somebody coming knocking on your door. Can I save you some encyclopedias today? Mother or father had to buy A to Z so we could have a full understanding. Oh, we didn't go to Google. Man, we had to pull one of them encyclopedias out. We had the research. Amen. It's not, it's not like computer, spell supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Man, we had to find a word for ourselves. When you understand as a child, your understanding is handicapped, immature, limited. You only can go so far. That's the way it is with life. If your understanding of certain things in life is small, a good example, love. Many toss that word around loosely. I love you. And that woman's heart get heated, or that man start smiling. You, you what? And she's like, oh, I'm going to fall out. Let me slow your fainting roll up just a little bit. I love you. Mm. Then you tell him, explain it. Oh, explain what? He's, the moment he responds, explain what? He's telling you he don't understand it. That's right. Because my understanding of the word, if it's small, I love small. If it's much, I can love much. Depending upon what, listen, if I understand the Bible, the more I understand, the more I can do. That's right. The less I understand, the less I can do. That's right. So the more I love, understand it, the more I can put it into action. Yes. And the more I can show it. And the better I can express it. If I'm limited in my understanding, I am limited in my performance. Anything, if I don't understand fully how this car work, don't get in here with me. Can you drive? Uh, I can drive a little. I'll be dumb to ask you. Let me get in there and let me see. And you hit every car that's parked, <laughs> including the people on bikes. If you don't know reverse from drive, from park, I'm not getting in the car with you. You first have to learn. Many people's out today, hear me well, yeah. trying to witness to people. Why would you try to be a witness what you cannot comprehend? Somebody said, oh, I want to share with others the love of Christ. How can you share the love that you yourself don't understand? How can
can he, these men preach God's word? And yet they have very little understanding of God's knowledge, God's wisdom, and the way God's word is atomized. When I have God's word right, I don't need help from a historian. That's right. I don't need help from theology. Because there's no theory in God. God is all facts. Are you listening? Why should I go to theory to learn anything about God? Theory can't teach me nothing about God. He's a God of facts. He's a God of truth. He's a God of certainty. Are you listening? When I was a child, I spake as a child. When I was a child, be myself, my mother, I would watch her make biscuits yeah. from scratch. I remember that big tan bowl. When she would make cakes, you know, pound cakes. And I couldn't wait till the bowl was empty. Now that I think of it, I don't know how I did it. But man, she would... That batter be left in the bowl, and she'll leave me a little extra batter. Ooh, glory to God. Yes, sir. How you talking? I, I could not wait. She knew, I, she knew why I was hanging around the kitchen. I wasn't hanging around the kitchen to cook, nothing. She said, Nikki, she get the bowl. I'm looking. She said, all right, here's the bowl. I jump on that table. <clears throat> Couldn't wait. I'd ate every drop of batter. I won't do it now. When she make biscuits, she'd give me some dough. My hands was dirty. I didn't understand them, but I understand now why my biscuits came out gray. <laughs> she gave me some dough and I'd make biscuits. She said, you done your biscuits? I said, yeah, yeah. She said, now. <laughs> Oh, she did it so good. Your biscuits will go here. <laughs> uh, in other words, your dirty biscuits <laughs> is for you only. I didn't understand. Yeah. I got understanding now. And I remember my hands, she said, wash your hands. You know, as a child, you have washed your hands because I'm so anxious to get the biscuits together. She give me my dough and I'm biscuit. This. She said, "All right." She said, "I'm gonna give you just make two, no more than three. Make my biscuits." Now notice mine was segregated. <laughs> Racist biscuits. <laughs> Glory to God. The <laughs> Amen. You know the the colored biscuits. Had their own place. And, uh, and man, she set mine away. And she said, now be sure you eat your biscuits. See, these are for everybody else. It's for all the house. She said, you have your own biscuits. Ricky don't have his own. Cookie don't have, Pixie don't have her own. You have your own just for you. And I remember asking her, why my biscuits is darker than yours? <laughs> She said, because they lovely biscuits. <laughs> Mine was full of contrary dirt. But it was good and very good. Now, we come along with the scriptures here. They're not dirty. And we handle it, the scriptures, clean. Mixing. Old Testament yes. and new, nice. so nothing yes. contradicts the other. Wonderful. Are you getting me? Nice. When men handle God's word, the bread, and handle it wrong, it come out just like my biscuits did, dirty, because of their lack of ability to handle God's word and because they have the understanding of a child. 
Do you hear this? When I was a child. When I was a child. I speak as a child. I speak as a child. I understood as a child. See, when I was a child, I wanted to learn. I stayed around older folk. I, I did. I stayed around older people. Because I wanted to learn. I was fascinated when the aged men and women would sit and tell, talk about their experiences and whether they was good or bad. I was fascinated with it. And I was sit there and listen, eat it up. So as a child, you know, I would think certain things that make me feel like a man, nice. like having a lot of keys on my hip. Yeah. My father, if he get new locks and whatnot, he don't throw the keys away, he'll give them to me. And they give me something to put the keys on, I put them on my hip, and my keys would be jangling up my father. Oh, man. Nice I felt like a man. Yeah. He have keys, I have keys, That's we right. all have keys, and yet my keys don't go to nothing. That's <laughs> right. When my father would drink coffee when I was little, I, my mother would give me hot milk. I couldn't go nowhere near the stuff now. But I have hot milk. But I thought drinking coffee, that's, that's what men do. So when my father, if he don't drink all this coffee, I'll wait till he leave. <laughs> and if my mother don't drink all hers, I'll wait till she leave. I get both cups, pour it in mine. Yeah. Oh, man, you don't bother me now. I'm a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got my yeah. little cup of coffee. And I was sitting back, drinking like a man. My mother said, you think you're a man now, don't you? I'm like, yeah. I deceived myself. Now, when you have the understanding of a child, you're liable to fall into self-deception. Are you listening? So you have to be around a mature atmosphere to get all the confusion out of your mind so you can think right, think clear, and then you can approach life clearly and patiently. When you're like a child, you're anxious. You get too in a hurry. Maturity stabilizes you to be patient. Though God says let patient have her perfect work perfect. wanting nothing. Are you listening? Yes. So many of us still in the stage of developing. You always want to be growing yeah. in God, and you never want to get to the point you're grown. Excellent. As long as you're in God, you'll find yourself. There's always room for development, so there's always room for improvement. And where there's improvement, there's room for expanding. Are you listening? Amen. When you're a child, you imagine things. You have imaginary friends. <laughs> you see things that never happen. My mother took a while for her to undo my imagination. I thought, I remember when my youngest brother was born, we five years apart, birthday the same day. But when I was younger, she could not convince me at all that she didn't bring him home in a suitcase. <laughs> she could not convince me. <laughs> suitcase. You know I had the understanding of a child. I was convinced. He came home in a blue suitcase, she laid the suitcase on the living room floor, opened it up, and my brother was wrapped in a, a yellow blanket. He was laying in that suitcase crying, and she gave him to me and said, here's your, your, your new brother. This is your baby. Then she put him back in the suitcase and took him upstairs. Imagination. Later on when I got older, she straightened that out and cast the suitcase devil out of me. I, I, I know now she wasn't carrying him around in a suitcase. 
That's where child understanding coming at. Yes. The same thing spiritually. You go to the book of knowledge, yeah. and yet you see in here what's not in here. So therefore, imagination come, and man start religion. Man have self-made revelation, and he come out with his own idea, his own opinion, based upon what he see, not based upon what God show him. Do you get what I'm telling you? When God step in, he clear away all imagination, all theory, and he have a sure word of prophecy left behind. Sure. Do you hear what the Bible says here? When I was a child. When I was a child. I spake as a child. When you was a child, you speak as a child. I you walked as one. That's right. And that child wobble, stand up, and start holding on to stuff. That's the way you are when you first come to the knowledge of the truth. That's true. There's a wobble in your walk. You have not yet mastered living holy. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? You have not yet mastered living holy. There's a wobble in your walk. There's a wobble in your character. Don't make no early declaration. Wait until you're able to stand up without holding on to somebody else. Wonderful. See, the reason why, as a child, you hold on to things, you need those things for support. In the natural, so you don't fall. In the natural, just starting out, sometimes you need the support of others. But as you grow, you'll find yourself winging yourself away from others, and you are only leaning on God for all support. Hallelujah. Glory. Faith in him. He'll be a crutch. He'll be a wall. He'll be a rod. Hallelujah. He'll be a rod. You will stand on him and only on him. Because sometimes Leaning on people, they may be the ones that turn on you. And you don't lean on them so much, you cannot now survive when they're out the picture. That's true. It's nothing wrong if you got someone to lean on when they're dependable. Say, I don't believe in this. I promise this. I promise that. Man, telling me I promise you don't mean nothing. Either you're a man of your, of your word or you're a woman of your word. Saying, I promise you, don't add more force or legitimacy to what you talk. Because promises are broken. That's true. That's true. All the time. Don't put your high, yourself higher up than where you are. Just be where you are and accept that reality Patiently, Patiently and wait and let God take you to the next level, not yourself. Right. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. My understanding. You know, sometimes young people in their teens got involved with older women. You couldn't convince that young guy he wasn't in love. Sometimes young guys, 17, 18, got involved with older women. And sometimes women, 16, 17, 18, got involved with older guys, 30, 35, 40. Man, you couldn't convince them they wasn't in love. Until they begin to mature and get older understand what love really consists of and find out it was nothing but lust. And many times lust, in most cases, don't have nothing to do with love. 
The preacher supposed to know the word of God better than you. So he can guide you in your spiritual journey walking through the book. Through the book is the knowledge of God, wisdom of God, the greatness of God. If he don't have the understanding from God about God, his representation of God will be wrong but sound right. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof a death. So the better understanding is this. You can have a fireplace. But the child may not be aware of the danger of the fireplace. The child is attracted to the light. The child may start throwing stuff there or put his hands in it. So what do mother and father do? Run. Run. Why? She valued the child's life and she wants to save its life from harm. That's the way it is in God. Many of us try to handle things in scripture too hot, too heavy, too deep. And we're not ready to handle God's word yet. Why should you be concerned about the mark of the beast? Try to live holy first. Why should you be concerned about Gog and Magog and Mesech and Tabalcain and the Battle of Armageddon? First, learn, learn the principles first. Walk first. Why should you want to worry about uh, what is it around the throne? Well, wait a minute. Know there's one God. Know that his name is Jesus Christ. And when you learn that, hold that till you learn more about him. Hold it. Hold it tight. Precept upon precept, line upon line, must be your approach to scripture and must be your approach to life. Otherwise, you will set yourself up, oh, I'll never do this, I'll never do that, I'll never do the other. Well, you only can say that if you have the experience to say it. If you don't have that experience, I'll never do will become something done. And then you have to repent for what you declare what you never will do. I'm pretty sure them people in the Gaza Strip never thought there'd be a predicament they're in. There are people still writing, writing me now, laying me out. Stay away from politics. Stick to Bible. Do you know what politics is? Politics is the fulfillment of scripture. Anything that's going on in the world and everything going on in the world fulfill God's word. So let me briefly say this to you and then I get back to child thoughts and child talk and child walk. It is the thinking of a child that only Jews are right. Did you hear what I said? It's the mind of a political child to tell me only Jews are right. It is the thoughts of a child to tell me that the Jews are justified in slaughtering innocent Palestinian civilians because the Bible says, talk about the Jews. There are two types of Jews. You see, I'm a Jew. The Palestinians are Gentiles. I'm a Jew by coming to the God of Abraham, believing 
in the God that Abraham believed in. My spiritual circumcision was performed by the sharpness of the scriptures. Removing the foreskin of my heart. Now I can boldly cry, Abba, Father. Over to God. Many of you politicians, teachers, you that's in the school districts of America, for some reason, you don't want the children to learn about what the Jews is doing to the Palestinians. What makes them better than the Palestinians? Paul said about the Jews, are they better than us? Nay, no. If the Jews can put out a Jewish flag, fine. Then the Palestinians can hang a Palestinian flag. If you're going to refrain from teachers and students and people from talking about the murder and bloodshed of the Palestinian people, they get the Holocaust off the networks. <clears throat> For when you got the right spirit, you are against murder of all kinds. If Israel going to attack Hamas, attack Hamas. A baby is not Hamas. A woman is not Hamas. An innocent civilian is not Hamas. When I thought as a child, when you think like a child, you want to diminish what the public should know. When you put away childish things, you will give the public all truth about everything. Are you listening? So you that keep writing me and telling me stay away from political matters, matters, I believe the prophets talked about the different kings. I believe the apostle Paul stood before King Agrippa. Jesus stood before Herod and spoke boldly and freely. He spoke open in the synagogue. This is why the truth of God is what it is. There is nothing off limits to us and to God's everlasting word. And if you men are scared to tell the truth about anything, come out of your pulpits. Come out, come out, come out. That's a child up there. Glory to God. What did he say, son? When I was a child, I spake as a child. I speak as a child. I understood as a child. And this is the people understanding today. They understand like children. Until someone that has more experience, stretch your mind. See, I believe in being a mental contortionist. Bending your mind in all type of directions that it takes to grab truth. If you limit yourself mentally, there's a defect in your maturity. Did you hear me? If you limit yourself mentally, you will always have a defect in your maturity because where you should be developing at, you won't. In God, there's spiritual maturity where you want to get higher and higher in your understanding of God, which better and sharpens your approach to God's word. Come on, James. And when you look at self, you don't put yourself nowhere where God didn't put you. That's right. And don't let people put you where God didn't put you. When you're sober-minded 
and you're mentally grounded. You see, a child can't take praise. A child loves attention. That's the way people are. They haven't matured yet. They love praise. They love attention. Like some preachers. Oh, elder, you're something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you show a preacher today? Can't take praise. But when you sound, settle. Yes. Praise don't mean nothing to you whether you get it or you don't. That's true. That's it. Are you listening? Oh, yes. When I was a child, I talked. As a child, I thought. As a child, what else? But when I became a no, man. No, 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 no. Get all of it. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I understood. I had a childlike understanding. Yeah. I thought as a child. Your understanding. You out there that think it's three persons in heaven, you got a childlike understanding. Who, right. oh, Pastor Jennings? All of you. You that baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Childlike understanding. You that think flesh and blood is in heaven, that's a childlike understanding. You that don't believe that God is alone by himself after he said he's alone and by himself, childlike understanding. You that's obsessed with Pastor Jennings and can't sit down unless you call my name. Childlike understanding. You see, a child is like this. A child is like this. My truck is better than yours. That's my truck. I want that truck. I think of my, my daughter, Sierra. Uh -huh. You know a pacifier? Well, when all the children little, you know, they had a pacifier. Yeah. Well, she couldn't say the word pacifier, so she called it her aya. <laughs> she, she would say, I want my aya. You know, children give names to anything. My aya. So I remember when Dottie was winging her from the uh, pacifier. We was in the clothing store. And Sierra was in the stroller, and Brittany was walking next to us, and me and Dottie was looking at clothing for the kids, and there was a woman that walked in with her daughter, and that daughter had a pacifier. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sierra lunged after that daughter, after that girl. Give me my aya. Give me my aya. She's like, she got my aya. She got my aya. That's all she knew. She understood in her mind that's supposed to be mine that's right. and no one's supposed to have it but me. You preachers out there that have a childlike understanding. You feel as though the truth of God shouldn't be as prosperous as it is. So this bring about childlike behavior, false prophecies. Yeah. Yes. Made up prophecies. The Lord said the church is going to burn down. The Lord said Pastor Jennings is going to go in the coma. The Lord said Pastor Jennings is going to fall out dead. The Lord showed me Pastor Jennings was in the hospital for uh, 10 years. The Lord showed me this. The Lord showed me that. Fake prophecies come about out of the attitude of jealousy. Yes. That's right. Jealousy is a motivator That's right. of fake prophecies. And when a man and a woman can prophesy just because they're jealous of someone, they are sick. They are emotionally disturbed. And they have the mindset of an unbalanced child. Are you listening? What did he say there? When I was a child, I spake when I as a child. When I was a child, I speak. As a child. As a child. I understood as I a child. I understood. As a child, my I, understanding was childlike. Uh -huh. I thought as a child. My thinking. Yeah. Now, if I think like a child, how am I going to act? I'm going to resolve matters That's right. like a child. That's right. Mm. That's true. I'm going to have childish jealousy, childish resentment. I'm going to look at people like a child. Oh! 
act like a child? Why are you talking to him? You should be talking to me. Going on 40, 50, 60 years old. Yeah. Child. Yeah. Favoritism like a child. As long as my thought process is like an unbalanced child, I cannot expect out of you the act or the behavior of an adult. Why? Because within my mind and my heart is childish, so therefore my approach going to be as a child. Did you hear this? When I was a child. When I was past it. Was. Past it. As a child, you ain't know how to hold your hands. You know, you fight, fight, fight. You become an adult. Ah, oh, yeah, come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. <clears throat> you know how to mix it up now. You're a child. You're a man now. Totally, di totally different fighting style. That's right. Are you listening? Oh, yes. When I was a child, ask yourself, are you still a child? Be a child in coming to Christ. Willing to learn. That's right. For he said, except ye come as these children. That's true. Humble. Oh, nice. To be shaped and molded and fashioned. Yes, yes. Willing, glory to God, to learn. Amen. When you're not willing to learn, then you ain't willing to grow. If you're not willing to grow, you are content with nothing. Child don't think about working and taking care of his family. Oh, no. A man think about working yeah. and taking care of his family. That's right. That's right. So you men that abandon your family, right. you ain't nothing but a poor child. That's true. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Oh, yes. Listen. When I was a child. When I was a child. I spake as a child. Spake as a child. I understood as a child. My understanding was as a child. I thought. As I a child. As a child. But when I became when a man. I became a man. I put away childish things. Put away. Before I was born. My mother's about what, 91? 92? 92? Now, when she was a child, uh -huh. little boys in her day didn't wear long pants. When you was a little boy in her day, when she was little, little boys was not allowed to wear long pants. Long pants was only for men. So little boys wore what was called knickerbockers, yeah. which told everybody, I'm a child. I'm a little boy. And when that little boy got his first pair of long pants, man, oh. glory to God, he was happy, God knows. Many men, especially them in the pulpit today, preaching, yeah. uh -huh. have a knickerbocker understanding about scripture. Yes. That's right. That's right. Right. See, knickerbockers, <laughs> knickerbockers, oh, but to the knee, right? Long pants, of course, they come down. Yeah. You preachers that have a knickerbocker understanding <laughs> is too short to reach the people in the kingdom. Your understanding of scripture is not long enough to properly explain the things of God. You have a short understanding, short term. Yes. Don't have full knowledge. No. If I have full length pants, they're long. If I have full term understanding about God and the things of God, I have good long understanding. Short term, I only can take the people but so far. That's true. Short term, only minimum progress. People only come so far, like Nate said, no growth. 
They're past 20 years, 30 years, no growth. Because that's Knickerbockerism. I, I came. I came out of a Knickerbocker church. Yeah, yeah, that's where I came from. The preacher's vision was short. God give a preacher long vision. Like in mathematics, there's long division, there's short division. When you have long division, it requires go over to God more work to get your answer. Sometimes short division is shortcuts to get the answer. And when I was in school, sometimes the teacher didn't want us to use short division. Because they wanted us to work. Because they would ask us, how did you get that answer? And sometimes, short division didn't show it. Sometimes with short division, you multiply the numerator and the denominator, and you got the answer. Take your head, no. I want to see the work. So you go back, man, so you multiply that, and that top to that, and Bring that down, then you get that top number, and subtract it, bring that down. Okay. You should be rem remainder something. <laughs> remainder something. The teachers want to see your work. You viewers out there, that's in churches, short division. The work of God can't be seen because you only can take the people so far. And what is your remainder? Nothing. Nothing. Amen. God division is long. Enough to take us right unto the kingdom of God. That's the way God wisdom is. Enough so we can be dropped off in God's kingdom. Short division is only good enough that I may see him. Short division is only get me to the point of seeing him because the Bible says every eye shall see him but everybody is not going to reign with him. Short division, I see him. I see it. That's not good enough for me. I don't want to see the bus and I said I want to get on it and ride. I don't want to see him, and that's all. I want to reign with him. Live with him. Hallelujah. Live with him. Then I know the word of God is being fulfilled throughout eternity. So short division is not showing me your work. Knickerbockerism. Huh? I came out of Knickerbockerism, Knickerbocker churches. The preacher told us he's fine if he don't see nobody get baptized again and nobody receive the Holy Ghost. He said he's fine with it because he, his excuse was he experienced it already. What kind of dumb excuse is that? God says be faithful unto death. That's long term. And I give you a crown of life. I am not satisfied with the church to hold a few thousand. I'm not satisfied. That don't, don't satisfy me. I'm not satisfied just looking at this campus and having two schools and two gymnasiums. Not me. Maybe some of you are. That's not enough for me. Long division here. I'm still sitting. Adding, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. I want to be re remainder in the kingdom of God. Yes! Beautiful. Are you listening? When I was a child, I thought, I spoke. I spoke as a child. As a child. I understood as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. I think like one. But when I became a man. When I became firm. 
Salad. Yes. Mature. I put, I put away childish things. My methodology of handling things yes. differ now. Put away. You don't handle things among each other like two little kittens. Wonderful. Amen. Gritting on each other in the street. Don't speak to somebody. He shook my hand. He didn't shake my hand. Who cares? Nice. That's childlike thinking. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Oh, yes. Worrying about who's at church. Who cares who's at church? Make sure you're there. That's childlike thinking. What he spent for his car, what she spent for her house, what she spent. That's childlike thinking. Yes. Are you listening? Amen. And when you're in this childlike embryonic stage, you're not yet formed. You're still forming. Bible says Christ be formed in you. Yeah. Therefore, when you talk, you don't make sense. When you understand what you should understand, you don't. And the way you think, the way you should think, you don't. Because you're still in a childlike mode. And I'm laboring. There's some that's going to be children long term. Some need crutches to walk. Some need braces because they've been broken. And you need to brace up the scripture to mend that part of self. Some think they're stronger than what they are until something happens and they wake up. And they realize they're not up there. They're down here. Like everybody else. That's right. Always let it be room for growth. My viewers, it's time for you to wake up now. Right. We're coming towards 2024, and you're still out there fighting over the same thing. You might as well come on and get ready to obey the message that we're preaching here. When, have you, when are you going to realize you're fighting this just as good as a gnat pulling this building with a harness on his back? <laughs> It'll never happen. You show me a gnat with a set of dentures like teeth. And he keep flying around your window grinning. <laughs> it would not be something. Everything in the watching, get ready to obey what God says to do. You that are fighting, you're nothing but children. If you're wise, you'll put away your fighting. And repent of all your sins. That goes for you that are here. Be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. This for, is Acts 38. For the remission of sins. And ye shall receive. Shall receive. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. The gift of the Holy Ghost cost the promises unto you. For the you. promises unto you. And who else? And to your children. Did you hear that? It's for you and your children and, and to, to all, all that are far off. You that's far away. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Bible says the Lord has spoken. Called the whole earth. From the rising of the sun, glory to God to the going down thereof. Wonderful. Anybody who wants to be baptized, obey the Bible. Be baptized in water. and Be Bible right. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you don't go to hell. Stand on your feet if you want it. Wonderful. Amen. Follow that brother over there. When I was a child, I spake, I spake as, a child. as a child. I understood as a child. My level of understanding was like a child. I thought as a child. My way of thinking was like a child. But when I became a That's man. That's what bring about so many arguments. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And so many fights. Yes. Yeah. People don't look at things from what the word of God said. That's right. What shows you they're a child, they keep trying to put their, trying to push their thoughts and their will all over. They say, I know what the Bible said, but. I know what the Bible said, 
but you act like a child. Mama and daddy tell the child something. Did not did you understand what I said? Yeah, but but what? But daddy, but what? That's the way you are about the scriptures. Yes. You hear the word of God say something? Think like the Bible. I know the Bible right, but you ain't nothing but a foolish child. When you find yourself get mad at it so you don't speak to nobody. But the child. I know much of what I preach many times by God's permission makes some of you angry. <laughs> I know it do. It makes some of you very upset. Get mad and angry. Roll your eyes at me. Pan your beady fish eyes in no mind. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Do you really think rolling your eyes with, at me gonna change the Bible? No. God said in Jeremiah, "Be not afraid of their faces, That's right. That's lest right. I confound thee before them." It is your beady-eyed, fish-eyed fool. That's right. <laughs> nice. You're suffering from Estherism. <laughs> All right, Cheesy? Estherism. When you're a child, the word of God hits you so hard, you don't want to speak to nobody. That's not going to change the Bible. What do you mean when you say such and such? The Bible says, well, I have nothing. Well, I have nothing. But, 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 but nothing. Come back to the Bible. Yes! Come on back to it. Wonderful. Word of God hurt me. But I'm not dumb enough to stop speaking to God. I need his help. Yeah. Amen. To digest everything God said. Nice. Thank you for listening, brother. Yes! Now. I want to say to my traveling team, we were scheduled to meet at 4 o'clock. We'll meet at 3.30 instead. We'll start putting together the schedule for 2024. And uh, if I start traveling anywhere to declare the word of God, I want to hijack my wife and go somewhere and rest. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Don't ask me where I'm going. That's right. Wonderful. I think I believe it was Jesus that said, or the apostle said to Jesus of one and vice versa. The way you go, where you go. So I'm going away. Wonderful. Not to not to prepare a place for you. <laughs> not where I am, ye may be also. Amen. Amen. I need some rest, but one week, one week will never do it. Amen. We've been laboring and laboring and laboring. But the help of God, next year we'll be pastoring 40 years. It all been easy? Oh no. We had men come in here and for some reason they thought this would be a walk in the park and they can take us over and they can bully their way in and oh man, they must have been crazy. Wonderful. We had brothers in here and thought that they can tear their church up and all this stuff and oh man. This is the best thing in the world. <laughs> Nothing like it. Nowhere. So we all waiting there. Everybody asking me, how you going to move around in that pulpit up there? <laughs> That's right. As long as it got stairs, I get around. If I got to come out of there, I come out of there. 
<laughs> you will. God be my help. We're waiting. I know some of you out there listening in, your preachers already forbid you to come because he feel threatened. But I know some of you going to sneak in anyway. Don't let your preacher scare you up. You better not go down there to where Pastor Jennings is. I'm going to come in town uh, so I can hold service while he hold it. Okay. Philadelphia don't belong to me. You can hold services any way you like. When are you preachers going to realize I'm not interested in what you're doing? We are preaching the word of God to bring the people out of falsehood. And God going to see to that, and I must bear witness. God Almighty is doing a miraculous job. Amen. All right. Let us all stand. Come back at 5 o'clock. And to my traveling team, we'll meet, God willing, at 3.30. Brother Moretti will close us out in prayer. God Almighty, we come before you in prayer, thanking you for your faithfulness and your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, how you came through, how you continue to come through for us. We ask you, Lord God, to help us to not just be hearers, but doers of your word. Remember those, Lord, that seek in the Holy Ghost. We ask, Lord God, that you would soon fill them, those that's battling with cancer. We ask, Lord God, that you would deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. Those, Lord God, dealing with depression. We ask, oh, hallelujah, oh God, that you would help them. And remember them, Lord. Help us and keep us. We ask this and many other blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.